Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, put your hands together. Let me say good morning to the church. What a blessing it is to be alive. What an even greater blessing it is to be saved. For again, we're not smiling on God, but God is richly smiling on us. Let me say welcome this morning to the Friendship Church, 101 Friendship Street, Hamilton, Georgia, 31811, where we are indeed a family of love united in the power of Jesus Christ. Come on, let's get started today in our morning of worship, our morning of celebration, our morning of lifting up the name of our Christ. Amen. For he did say, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Anybody come to lift up his name? Anybody come to tell the Lord, thank you? Anybody know he is worthy to be praised? The old hymn says, down at the cross. Come on, y'all help me. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where for cleansing from sin I cry.
give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'm singing glory to his name. Do me a favor, like our page and share our page as we seek to celebrate Jesus Christ as he has risen from the dead. Amen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, celebrate us. Celebrate him with us as we seek to do that which the Lord has asked us to do. Our praise team is in place. They're going to lead us through praise and worship. Join in with them as we together do that which the Lord has asked of us to do. Amen.
Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. Anybody glad that without a shadow of a doubt you can see the goodness of the Almighty God? Isn't God worthy? Isn't he worthy? Let me say it one more time. Y'all ain't caught on yet. I said, isn't God worthy? For he is worthy to be praised. How do you know, day from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he is worthy to be praised. Let me say grace and peace be multiplied to each of you from God our Father, his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, who's both our comforter and our guide. I'm grateful God has did it again. Amen. He's given us another chance to be back in the house of worship one more time. And for that, I tell the Lord, thank you. Listen, let me say thank you to each of you this week. Again, for all your calls, emails, text messages, whatever capacity of communication that we've had, let me say to you, thank you so much for, amen, just looking out and just trying to uh, communicate for, with your pastor, amen, in the midst of all that we have going on. I do want to take a moment to say, I thank you, ma'am. I thank you, sir. Amen. This week, as we're moving forward, we're in the month of July. This being the first Sunday in the month of July, we're going to celebrate, amen, the Lord's table today by way of bread and wine. And so I want to encourage those of you who have not done it already, please, ma'am, please, sir, go ahead and secure your grape juice or your water and your bread as we will give symbolism and symbolic to that of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, knowing that the bread represents his bruised and broken body, knowing that the wine represents the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross. Amen. And so I would today that you join with us as we take a moment to both remember and reflect of the fact of what Jesus Christ himself did in becoming our propitiation over 2,020 years ago. He became our substitute. He died in our place. And I don't know how you feel about that, but I just want to tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Listen, as we're moving into the month of July, as it is our custom friendship, I want you to remember this will be our month of rest. We're on a period of rest this month. Amen. We're going to take the entire month to continue to do as we've done so many years in the time before. Even now, as we are social distancing, we're still going to take time to rest and to reflect. So there will be no church school on Monday nights. There will be no Bible study on Wednesday nights. There will be no 20 at 12 with the pastor um, at 12 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. We're going to just have prayer Wednesday mornings at 7 a.m. And that shall be it. I still believe prayer is always in order. I believe man should always pray and faint not. So I want you to please, ma'am, please sir, join us Wednesdays at 7 a.m. as we seek again to go into corporate prayer during the middle of our work week. Amen. So again, the month of July, amen, it will be an off month. No church school, no Bible study, amen, no 20 at 12. Only thing we will do is we will have corporate prayer on Wednesday mornings at 7 o'clock a.m. Amen. If y'all was in the sanctuary, I would say, uh, is everybody all right? Amen. How about giving the Lord a hand clap of praise for that? I thought you would. Amen. <laughs> Pastors, thank you so much about not just you, but I'm thinking about myself as well. Amen. And so we'll meet back again beginning the month of August, and we'll come back as time uh, gets closer. So be on the lookout for your emails, text messages, uh, whatever capacity of communication that we shall render. Amen. I want you to be on the lookout for that so that we can make sure that we are informed. Amen. If something goes down and you need me, I would that you please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, reach out to the church clerk, Sister Jane Porch, or reach out uh, to my administrative assistant, Sister Gail Ingram, and they will be able to reach me so that we can get what needs to be done, done. Amen. To God be the glory. Now, lest I hold you, I don't want you to stop giving. I want you to continue to give in your gifts as we seek to render our gifts unto the Lord. For you do know God is a generous God, and because he is, we want to make sure that we return back to him that which he has blessed and rendered unto us. And with that being said, I want you to remember, you can give in one of three ways. Please, ma'am, please, sir, know every Sunday between the hours of 11.30 and 12.30, our leadership team, our finance team is in place in the Life Center lobby to receive your gifts. So please drop those off. If not, please mail them to P.O. Box 546 Hamilton, Georgia. 
That's P.O. Box 546, Hamilton, Georgia, 31811. Or you can always download the Giblify app, and you can give by way of the uh, Giblify app. Search the word Friendship Hamilton, and you will be able to do just that. Listen, I really appreciate each and every one of you. I'm grateful today that you thought of that robber to be in worship with us, but you could have been in any other place. But I want to say thank you to you uh, so very much that you thought it not robbery to visit in the virtual sense of worship here at the Friendship Church here in Hamilton, Georgia. And for that, I simply want to tell you thank you. Amen. Again, if there's anything that needs to come to our attention, please email us. Again, you can get us at LaCoyaDay at BellSouth.net or email the office at uh, FBCH18669. That's FBCH18669 at gmail.com. Someone will be ready and willing, amen, to answer whatever issues you have at that time. And all of God's people said, amen. Listen, we're transitioning now. I do want to say thank you uh, to Pastor Adrian Chester. On last Sunday, he came and he shared in my stead in my absence. And I want to say to him, thank you so very much for doing that for us, being a brother beloved. And for that, if we can ever again do anything for you, let us know. We really, really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to come and share with the Friendship Church. And for that, we would tell the Lord, thank you. Listen, we're making ready to move into prayer. For again, as I say and state all the time, prayer may not change anything. But watch this, prayer always pleases God. And many times I am challenged about that theology because so long, so much, so often, we've always stated these words, prayer changes things. But, but here's what I believe. I believe by faith, I believe by conviction, there are people that pray, but their prayers many times don't reach the top of the ceiling. But when you have what is called sincere prayer, I believe sincere prayer will always reach the heart of God. And here's what I believe today, beloved. I believe that when you pray and pray right while prayers may not change things, watch this, prayer will always please God. And I believe tonight, today, rather, that when God is pleased in his sovereign hand and his work and his power and his authority, God will begin to change some things. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you're sitting. I don't know where you're on your job and your car listening. I don't know where you are. But I want to encourage you today to don't give up on God. Because the reality is God has not given up on you. And so as we make ready to move into moments of prayer, moments of meditation, I want you to steal yourself. I want you to steal yourself. And I want you to think about the goodness of the awesome God. He's a good God. He's worthy to be praised. You got an issue. I have an issue. We all have issues. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your issue and lay it at the feet of Jesus. Anybody ever had to just lay your feet, your burdens at the feet of Jesus? And I feel the old church sneaking up. They say he may not come when want him to, but how many of y'all know he's always right on time? Anybody love the Lord? Come on, say it with me today while you go on. I love you. Say it like you mean it. I love you. We're meditating. We're thinking. We're asking God. Time. We're going into prayer. Come on. I love you. I love you. Yes, sir. I 
love you. Say it again. I love you.
presence. We would declare it was good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we'll declare that's why my heart is filled with praise. In the name of him that, that died, but he in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. In every heart that agreed, said amen. Amen.
the Lord a hand clap of praise right long in there. Come on, somebody ought to put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I don't know where I would be without your grace. Amen. Nothing I've done so grand, good, or great. But how many of y'all would testify the reason I'm here is simply because of the grace of the awesome and almighty God. Ain't anybody glad you know who God is? Anybody glad not only do you know who God is, but how many of y'all thank God you, he knows who you are? And the reality today is if it had not been for the Lord on my side, then the question would be asked, where would I be? Amen. I want to call your attention to the book of Matthew, Matthew's Gospel this morning, chapter number 14. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14. If it be the will of the Lord, I want to read a few of the following verses, beginning at verse number 29. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 14. I would that you pray with us and pray for us. Amen that I not be seen, but God be heard, that God would hide me not beneath his cross, but I need him now to hide me in the cross, that these, his people will see none of me, but then thou shall see all of thee. The gospel as recorded by St. Matthew chapter 14, beginning if you please at verse number 29, when you have it, would you register by saying amen? amen? And the word of our Lord says, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the winds boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31 says, and immediately... Jesus stretched forth his hands and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? With the Lord's help and with your amens, I want to use for this sermon subject this morning, I got wind in my eyes. I got wind in my eyes. My brothers and my sisters, we're thankful this morning for the writing of this text as Matthew now has put pen to parchment what Matthew does is he gives both you and I to the believer something that we can hold on to the reality of what Matthew says as he begins to write today is that Matthew suggests to each and every one of us that if we learn to keep our eyes on Jesus everything will be all right as we think about what we have going on in the world, as we think about what we have going on all around us, things such as the White House, things such as the State House, things such as the local house, things such as police brutality, things such as systemic racism, things such as COVID-19, it has allowed us to take our eyes off Jesus Christ. But I stopped by this morning, this first Sunday in the month of July to report to those of you that know who God is to suggest that if you learn to keep looking at Jesus, no matter what comes your way, everything, it'll be all right. I believe today I got somebody that has a witness that is a testifying saint and soldier to know that yet they I've been in position wherein I've taken my eyes off Christ. And here it is today. I want to join that bandwagon to suggest that yet you're not the only one that's taken your eyes off Christ. I've taken my eyes off Christ. My neighbor has taken their eyes off Christ. My family has taken our eyes off Christ. But here's the good news of the gospel is that whenever I take my eyes off of Christ, I can do these three words and simply say, Lord, save me. And I wonder today if there's anybody that tell y'all, I make 11 that will testify. I thank God today that when I took my eyes off of him, when I got wind in my eyes, all I had to do was simply 
to shout, Lord, save me. Is there anybody in YouTube, is there anybody on Facebook Live that will come in, in the chat box and say, yeah, day, I too have taken my eyes off of Jesus Christ. But here's the good news today. God, he'll keep me when I can't keep myself. And I wonder today, is there anybody that want to help me preach till I feel a little better to tell the Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you because when I let go, you caught me. When I got pushed down, you picked me back up. When I couldn't see my way in through or out, you came to get me out and I want to tell you without a shadow of a doubt, thank you for being my Savior. Do I have a witness in here? Anybody just want to shout thank God? for being my savior. No matter what's in your heart, here's what I want you to know, that God, he'll take care of you. And I wanted to suggest that you, know, you go on and tell the Lord, thank you. You go on and shout hallelujah. You go on and shout much of life because when you look around and think things over, you'll testify all of my good days. Come on, y'all gonna help me preach in here. I said all of my good days outweigh my bad days. And even though I got weird in my heart, I'm not gonna complain. Well, tell me, Dave, why won't you complain? Because here's the reality of the text. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But how many of y'all thank God he looked beyond my fault? Am I the only one in the building? Am I the only one in virtual reality that know he looked beyond my fault and supplied my every need? And I don't care who's sitting next to me. I don't care who's talking about me. I don't care who's tweeting about me. Here's the good news of the gospel. I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. Can you just take about 10 seconds on your own? Get your own praise. Get your own shout. Get your own hallelujah. Tell your own Christ. Lord, I just want to thank you because even though I got weird in my eyes, uh, you saved my soul. But I have a witness in here. What Peter does today is Peter suggests that the writings watch this of Matthew that he had even though the end may get in your eyes. He suggested that all you got to do is say, Lord, save me. Here's what I want you to know today in the context of the reality of this writing. Here it is. Jesus now is walking on the water. Here it is, the fourth watch of the night. According to verse 25, the text says, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, watch this, walking on the sea. And the disciples, the, watch this, saw him that walked on the sea, and they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit. And they cried out for fear. But here's the good news tonight, verse 27. Jesus said, Listen, don't worry about what you're afraid of. He said, Be of good cheer. It is high. Be not afraid. Can I suggest today, today when I see this text, and I look at Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 29 through 31, in the context of this surrounding, the reason why I see in the text he has wind in his eyes is simply because the text says in verse 30, the wind began to get boisterous. Are y'all in here with me? He was walking the text says when he was afraid, he started to sink. But here's what he does. He cries out, Lord, save me. Anybody glad today that even though you see something you think is a spirit, he'll calm your nerves and say, it is high. Be not afraid. And even though you begin to move and the wind get in your eyes, you begin to see. You can shout these three words, Lord, save me. I dare you to shout real quickly today. If you don't know him in the free part of your sin, if you're on your way to a burning hell, you can shout just these three words. One, two, three. You can say, Lord, save me. Me. Do I have any help in here? Watch this. It ain't just for those who are not delivered. It's for those who have been delivered. Because here's the reality of the text. I know that either I have been saved, I'm being saved, and I shall be saved. What do you mean? They so in the midst of what I got going on, in the midst of my singing, the three words that ought to resonate in my spirit. What are they? they Lord, save me. Do I have a witness in here? Why well, say? Because here it is. He got wind in his eyes. There are a couple of excerpts I want to give you from this exercise. I promise you, I'll be in my seat. The reason why I think he needs to shout, Lord, save me. It's simple of all the wind. Here it is, number one, has caused him to rethink what he saw. Are y'all in here with me? Note the text, if you please. Verse 29. The text says, and Peter answered him. Look what he says. He said, Lord, 
He says, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Verse 29, watch this. He asked the Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. Do I have any help in here? But can I suggest to somebody that any time you begin to move toward Jesus, there's some things and stuff going to get in your way. Can I suggest any time you begin to move toward the Christ, there, there's going to be some disturbances and some distractions that get in your way. Any time you get ready to move, uh, watch this toward Christ, things uh, will try to get and turn your attention. But can I suggest to you, don't be like Peter. Don't start rethinking what you see. Saul, you better know that's Jesus on the water. Anybody glad today? That's it's Jesus on the water. Anybody shouting with me today? That yet yeah, he didn't see just any spirit. But how many are glad he saw the spirit? How do I know it was the spirit? Watch this. He affirms what he saw. Here it is, Tina. How do you know he affirmed? Verse 27. He says again, he said, Listen, Christ said it. Here it is. Be of good cheer. That's all I needed to hear those four words be a good cheer. Watch this. Whenever I hear those four words be a good cheer, I know he'll wipe tears from my eyes. Y'all ain't saying nothing when I hear those words be a good cheer. I know he'll rock me to sleep in the midnight of the hour. When I hear those words be a good cheer, I know he'll never leave me, nor will he forsake me. When I hear those words be a good cheer, I know I got somebody that'll hold my hand. Matter of fact, forget that. I got somebody better let me hold their hand. Can I tell you who his name is? His name is Jesus. Anybody know who he is? Anybody thank God you know who he is? I know him not just as Mary's baby. No, I know him not just as Joseph's stepson. No, I know him not just the one that turned over tables inside the temple. Well, can I tell you who he is to me? He's not what my mama says he is. He's not what my daddy says he is. But can I tell you who he is to me? He's not what my wife and children say he is. But can I tell you, he is my savior. Anybody glad today that when you rethink what you saw, it'll cause you to take your eyes off of Christ. But can I want you to do is stand still, watch God working out. Christ says it is I be of good cheer. Not only does he suggest that when he rethinks what he saw, Christ comes back to stay be of good cheer. Why does he stay be of good cheer? Because what he wants Peter to understand that he wants him to see him as his savior. Can I suggest today that while we're here on the first Sunday of the month of July, celebrating the Lord's table. Listen, we're not celebrating the Lord's table just to celebrate the Lord's table, but we celebrate the Lord's table in because Jesus has revealed himself as my Savior. And I wonder today, is there anybody glad he's your Savior? Is there anybody glad he's your Savior? I thank God for the Honorable Louis Mer uh, Farrakhan, even on yesterday as he gives words uh, to the nation. But I want to suggest he's not my Savior. I want to tell you who's my Savior. My Savior is the one that was born in Bethlehem. The Savior is the one that was baptized in the Jordan. The Savior is the one that healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind. My Savior is the one that hung between two things, hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. He died, but he didn't stay there. Can I tell you who my Savior is? He's the one that died on Friday, but early Sunday morning. I wish y'all would help me preaching here early Sunday morning. Watch this. He reveals not I, I am a dead Savior, but I'm a risen Savior. Be a good cheer. He says these three words. It is I. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you're sitting. But whenever you have wind in your eyes, don't rethink what you saw. You better know he's God. And besides him, there is no other. Not only does wind cause me to first of all rethink what I saw, yes. but wind will cause me, watch this Tina, to redefine what I believe. Right. Are y'all in here with me? How, how do you know here it is? The text says according to verse number 30, but when he watched this, saw the wind more shorts. The wind was hacking up, the wind was doing something funny. The text says he was afraid. But watch the text. The text says, and beginning to sing, look what he says. He cried, saying, Lord, do what? Save me. What do you mean, Dave? It caused him to redefine what he believed. As long as he kept his eyes on Christ, 
watch this, he was able to walk on the water. Can I just drop my kickstand right there? Can I just hover up around your spirit? Just, just maybe you had got your breakthrough. It's simply because you took your eyes off him. Just, just maybe you ain't got where you wanted to go because you took your eyes off of him. Just, just maybe all hell and high water is breaking loose in your life because you've taken your eyes off of him. But can I tell somebody that if you learn to know who he is, you won't let the wind redefine what you believe. Do I have a witness in here? Not only does the wind cause me to rethink what I saw, but the wind will cause me to redefine what I believe. What did he believe? He believed, first of all, that he was walking in God's authority. Are y'all in here with me? How do you know here it is in the text? Go to verse 29. It says, and he said, this is Jesus talking. He says, what? Come. Do y'all see that? The word come now, it ushers in the authority of Jesus Christ. How do you know that? Because the text says, watch this, that when he began to come down out the ship, do y'all see verse 29? The text says, he did what? He walked on the water. Here's what I want you to know tonight, today rather, is that whenever wind is in your eyes and causes you to redefine what you believe, you forget about whose authority you're walking in. Can I suggest to somebody else, yeah, maybe you may have to stop walking in your own authority. Maybe you got to stop walking in your name authority. Maybe you ought to stop walking in your child's authority. Maybe you ought to stop walking in friendship authority. And just maybe you ought to walk in the authority of God. Do I have any help in here? It's found in Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness in here? As long as he kept his eyes on him. The text says he walked on the water. Yes, Can I suggest to somebody in here, maybe you got wind in your eyes. Yes, but I want to tell somebody, if wind get in your eyes, yes. you just may have to shake yourself. Are y'all in here with me? Because when I shake myself, watch this, I can refocus on Jesus Christ. We're contacts, and oftentimes my contact may get a little fuzzy, may get a little hazy inside of my eyes as I'm trying to see through my contacts, and really everything becomes a little blur. But every now and then, I have to take my hand and just rub my eye to get my contact to go back to my eye socket so I can see a little bit clearly. Can I suggest to somebody in here, just maybe the lens of your eye, you just may need to rub it a little bit to see a little bit more clearly. Can I suggest to somebody? Somebody, don't let nothing, don't let nobody, don't let anything redefine what you believe. Walk in the authority of God. Yes, sir. Do I have a witness in here? Yes. Watch this man only. Yes. Was he walking? Here it is. In the authority of God. Yes. But, but, but here it is. He was walking, watch this, in the plans of God. Right. The plan was for Peter to get out of the ship. And walk to me. All right. Not only do I have the authority to allow the water to be a one way to me, I have the authority to understand that this is the plan of God. Can I just suggest to somebody in here that yeah, you got to stop doing things in and of yourself. Can I suggest to somebody in here, you can't do it on your own. But you got to learn to walk, watch this. And the plans of God. Are y'all in here with me? Because watch this. Whenever you find yourself like walking in the plans of God under the authorities of God, some things will happen. What will happen? Watch this. The text says, according to verse number 29, verse 30, it says, and he began to sink. Notice the text that he uses the word beginning. Here's what I wanted to suggest to somebody in here. Every now and then, I'm okay with beginning to sink right. because as long as I haven't sunk, I still got another chance. Yeah. I wish y'all would say something to me. Let me see if I can say it again. I'm okay with beginning to sink right. but as long as I haven't sunk, I still got another chance. Can I drop my kickstand there? Ask somebody who's walking in God's authority, who's walking in God's plan. Are you glad you haven't sunk? Are you glad you haven't given in? Are you glad Here's what I believe today. I'm walking in the authority of God. 
He redefines yeah. what he believes. Here's what I want you to know today. Don't be afraid. Well, but I need you to know be of good cheer. Mm. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Because whenever I am of good cheer, only when we in gets in my eyes, not only does it re cause me to rethink mm. what I saw. Well, not only does it redefine what I believe. Yeah. But I got one more thing, and I'm gonna exert exit deep on this exercise. And I'll be in my seat. When the wind gets in my eyes, watch this. It'll cause me to remember what I first knew. Here's what I want you to know today. He did not wait till the wind got out of his eyes to call on Jesus. Y'all miss that. But while he was sinking, he began to call on Jesus. Maybe some of y'all in your lines being waiting to come out before you call on Jesus. Maybe some of y'all are in your fiery furnace waiting to come out before you call on him. Maybe some of y'all got in trouble on your job and waiting till they give you the report before you call on him. But here's what I want you to know that when wind gets in your eyes, it will cause you to remember what you first knew. What did he first knew? He first knew that it was Jesus yeah. that called them. Yeah, Y'all say something back to me. Uh-huh. How do you know? Because ever before he gets to verse 30 yeah. and uses three words, Lord, save me. Uh-huh. Yes, he had to remember verse 27 uh-huh. that when he looks, he sees Jesus. Yeah. How do you know? Because the words of the standard King James Worship is written in red ink, which tells me these are the words of Christ. Here it is, the island, he says, be of good cheer. Look what he says, it is I. He says, be not afraid. What did he remember? He remembers that first of all, it was Christ who saved him. Are y'all in here with me? How do you know the cause? In the midst of him walking in the waters on the fourth watch of the night. It is him that he asked when it looks like he was just a spirit. The Bible says he was not a spirit, but it was the spirit. Are y'all in here with me? How do you know David calls? Here it is. He cries out and says, Be of good cheer. What are you saying? Pastor Damson is saying that he ends when things do not learn to go my way. I have to get back to what I first believed. Have I gotten the help here? And when I don't have a no way in through or out. I gotta learn to remember a word I first believed. Have I gotten the help here now? For one, again, he first believed. He first believed that it was Jesus. Have I gotten the help here? And he first believed that it was his Savior. Have I gotten the help here that did it him to walk on the water? Can I stop there to tell somebody that yes, the wind, the wind gets in my eyes. I've got to learn that yes, I know who I believe. I got been here with me for years. I what did he believe? He believed that yes, it is Jesus. I've got to help him. I got out my seat. I came in the sanctuary to tell somebody. That yells when wind is in your eyes. You better learn to have faith in God. You better learn to trust in the Lord. And I've got to help you. But here's what Jesus says in verse 31. He says, Oh, a foul little faith. Where did you doubt me? Can I go to my 
sitting there and tell somebody that he has in the midst of systemic aggression you can adopt God in the midst of a racial profiling you can give up on God have I got any help here in the midst of economic turndown and economic depression you can give up on God have I got any help in here the reason why I can't give up on him is because he didn't give up on me. Are y'all in here with me? How do you know? But yes, Peter wasn't the only one that had to walk on the water. But can I tell somebody how Jesus was the one that had to walk on the road? Are y'all in here with me? I'm glad that he he got wind in his eyes when they whipped him all night long. He got wind in his eyes when they spit on him. He got wind in his eyes when they called him everything but a child of God. He got a wind in his eyes when they riveted his feet and they stretched him wide. But I'm glad he kept his eyes on God. But he and he said, Don't let me up now. If you lift me up, I'll trump all men to me. Have I got the help here? I'm so glad that he is. They lifted him above the earth. Have I got the help here? I'm glad that when they lifted him up, he died. I wish I could say it like I feel. He died. Anybody glad he died from the sick to the ninth hour? He died to the soul just got out the grave. He died to one soldier shouted, Surely this must be the Son of God. Anybody glad that he died? Can I tell somebody he died but didn't take his eyes off of his father? was in his eyes when they buried him in a jaws of a rich man's tomb. He was wind in his eyes when he stayed there all night Friday and they said that and I told somebody I planned that he didn't stay there because he got all power because his daddy got power and I tell you what he did just like Jesus uh, uh, saved Peter uh, and raised him from the water. Uh, he dared him uh, saved Jesus uh, and got him out the grave. Uh, and can I tell somebody uh, that when he uh, uh, got out the grave, uh, he didn't wait uh, to the next day to sing them. Uh, he didn't wait uh, to the next week to say anything. Uh, he didn't wait uh, to the next year to sing them. Uh, but when uh, he got out the grave. And I tell you what he did. He put one foot on earth and one foot on eternity. Can I tell you what he cried? He said, I found all power is in my hand. Anybody clap? You know he got power. Anybody clap? You know he got power. If you know he got power, you ought to say so. Have I got any help here? If you know he got power, you ought to clap your hands, you ought to say amen, and you know we got power, you ought to shout glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down, anybody glad, the Lord got power, can I go to my seat now, but I gotta ask you my question, ain't he worthy? I got any help here. I said, ain't it worth it? Y'all ain't said nothing. I said, ain't it worth it? He worth it. Have I got any help here? He worth it. Say yeah. Can you say yeah? Yeah. Can y'all say yeah? Yeah. Can y'all say yeah? He worth it. He worth it. To rethink what I saw. Call me to redefine.
time, but I believe. But before you hang up, I want to thank God for the win. Because whenever you got win in your eyes, it'll cause you to remember what you first knew. And it's at that point, you will shout, Lord, save me. Anybody glad God will save you? Anybody happy God will do for you what you can't do for yourself? And as we move throughout today, tomorrow, next week, month, and year, when we know we may be sinking, if you haven't sunk, do me a favor. Cry out three words and say, Lord, save me. And if you can believe that today, you don't have to wait till next week. If you don't have to wait till tomorrow. All right. But if you're unsaved, mm -hmm. those three words will get you saved. Amen. Those three words will allow you to reach the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And so we invite you to come down. While the blood is still running warm in your vein, mm -hmm. there may be somebody today who's out of the ark of safety. There may be somebody today who does not know Jesus Christ in the free part of their sin. There may be somebody today who's struggling, but I want you to know God is still in charge. Come by letter my Christian experience, or come as a candidate for water baptism. If you desire to be a member of the Friendship Church, if you desire to be saved, here's what I want you to do. Email our church, fbch1869 at gmail.com. Somebody will be to your attendance. If that's you today, will you come? By letter, by Christian experience, or as a candidate for water baptism. We've done what has been required. There has not been one to move. And so we say, may God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds now to receive the Lord's Supper. If you would, go ahead now. Prepare yourself by way of your juice and your cracker to represent the blood of Jesus and the body of our Christ. of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, 
that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show forth the Lord's death till he comes again. Our Father and our God, we thank you now for this precious privilege, God, to partake in this, the Lord's table. God, we know that we're not worthy, but your word teaches us do not partake in this unworthily. For it does damnation to our own soul. Yes. And so now, God, as we make ready to partake in this, the Lord's table, I pray that you will provide us growth, both grace and mercy. God, that we may be again recipients to remember that which you've rendered on our behalf. God, we thank you for this bread that represents your bruised and your broken body. We thank you for this wine that represents the blood that you shared on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. For again, God, we know, God, that we might have trespassed against others around us, even trespassed against you, our Lord. Help us now, even at this moment, to forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. But God, before the sun goes down this day, that which we've done wrong before you, I pray, God, that you allow us to go to whomever and ask for their forgiveness. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our suffering Savior. In the name of him, we pray. And every heart that believes said, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen. That night in which Jesus would have been betrayed, betrayed rather, he had broken the bread and he gave it away and he blessed it. He says, take, eat, this is my body. As often as you do it, do it in the remembrance of me. Let us eat of our bread. Likewise, when he had poured the cup, he says, this cup represents the blood that I will share for you for the remission of your sins in the New Testament. He says, as often as you drink this cup, do it in the remembrance of me. Let us drink of our cup. And the church said, Amen. Amen. The Bible says that when they ate and drank, they went out into a mountain of olives as they were led in him. We don't have a mountain of olives, but we do have a world that is filled with sin, sickness, and shame. And so as we go today, I pray that you'll pray with us and pray for us that God will continue to pour out his spirit upon this earth. Because until he moves, everything will continue to be in this chaotic and in disarray. Yeah. But when God moves, right. all things will come back together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's not forget, please remember, in the midst of our giving opportunity and time, this is your opportunity to give. If you have not given by Giblify, I pray that you would do so. If you have not mailed, I pray that you would do so. If you want to come by the church, the doors to the Life Center are now open and our finance team is ready to receive you as you drop off your gift. Listen, you cannot give God a tip. You got to give him a tithe. I pray that you will receive this message. I pray that you will receive the honor to be able to give unto God. As God so richly gives unto you. Listen, again, remember Homecoming 2020 is upon us. If you have not dropped off your campaign contribution, we pray that you would do just that. $150. Those of you who want to be a blessing to the Friendship Church who are not members without a shadow of a doubt. We invite you to become partners with us as we seek to do that which the Lord has blessed us on this ship. One of three ways. You can send it by mail, P.O. Box 546. Hamilton, Georgia, 31811. You can give it by Giblify. Download the app, search the words for Chip Hamilton, be a blessing, or you can simply drop off at the Life Center. Again, may God bless you, and may God keep you. We love you. We thank God for you. Keep us in your prayers as we seek together 
to do the will of our Christ. Amen? Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Let us pray. God, we thank you now for the time that we have had. Mm -hmm. I pray, God, that you have been made pleased with our worship. Oh, yeah. I pray, God, that our worship will become sweet, smell, and savor yeah. to your nostrils, God, to know that we honor and we adore you. Yeah. Thank you for these who've come today to help us yeah. in the rendition of this virtual worship. I pray, God, that you'll bless them even the more. Mm -hmm. I pray, God, that you'll give them shoes for long travel. Yeah. I pray that you'll cover them from the storm and the rain. Bless our coming in now mm -hmm. and leave this place but never from your presence. Bless our going out. In the name of he that died but yet lives, Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And every heart that agreed said, Amen. 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 Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling. Present us fathers for God, seeing the joy of the Lord, our God, our Father, be power, majesty, and dominion, is now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.